But whenever in our mind, the enemy, there's always two voices coming. A good one and a bad one. Amen? Mm -hmm. And which one wins depends on which one we feed. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's all a choice. God never takes away our free will choices to make the right decision. Simply gives us the power to make the right ones now. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. All right. How's everybody doing tonight? Much better now. Much better now. Amen. It was a really hard day, so it's going to be an important message, I can tell. It was a real rough day. Everything just, and the devil was all over me all day. Yeah. And I know this message is going to touch someone's soul. Amen? Amen. So now's the time the Holy Spirit is going to take over. And uh, to be attentive and not to cause any distractions that would uh, get the Spirit to go the other way. It's so easy to get distracted. Amen? Amen. All right, go to um, Matthew chapter 7. We're going to start there tonight before we get into our study. Mary's put a scripture up there, but that, I definitely can't stay that. There's going to be more to that one. We're going to start in verse 12. Matthew chapter 7, verse 12. The Spirit leads us into the Word. When Jesus says, follow me, what do you think he's saying? Follow my word, my ways. Okay. Is everybody there? Yep. All right. Thank you, Jesus. All right. <clears throat> the golden rule. <clears throat> do to others whatever you would like them to to do to you. This is the essence of all that is taught in the law and the prophets. The whole Bible comes down to this one example. Do unto others as you would like them to do to you. If somebody took the Bible away from you and said, what am I going to do? Do to someone else what you would have them do unto you, and you fulfill everything that's in this Bible. Can I get an amen for that? Amen. Very simple principle, but very hard to live by. But that's the golden rule. It says this is the essence or the meat that, of all that is taught in the law and the prophets. You can go and try to get all into this stuff into your head, but this is the simplicity where it brings it all to. Do to others as you would like them to do unto you. That is a Christ-like attitude. That's what the scriptures bring us to. <clears throat> okay. Verse 13, the narrow gate. This is a very confusing scripture, but we're going to clear it up right now. You can enter God's kingdom only through a narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad, and its gate is wide. For the many who choose that way, see it right there, he's saying to choose that way. But the gateway to life is very narrow, and the road is difficult, and only a few ever find it. Now, was he talking about going to heaven? No, he's talking about the gateway that leads to life now. Yeah. That's how difficult it is. It's very narrow, and it's difficult. It's very difficult to master your sin nature while you're alive here on earth. Amen. And it's narrow, and only a few ever find it because they can't get the strength within themselves through the Holy Spirit to say no to sin. So that's the difficult road, and it's very narrow, and only a few ever found it. How many people got in the boat before the flood? Eight people survived. How many people got in the promised land? Out of the whole generation, two. So don't think, that he's not, God's not talking about, oh, just believe and you're going to heaven. He's talking about, if you want to live a life worthy of why I saved you, the road is very narrow and difficult, and only a few of my followers ever find it. Or ever put the time in and the effort, effort in to master their sin nature, say no to sin and yes to Jesus. Amen? So that's what that means. Because it's not, hard to, it's not hard to go to heaven. It says, believe on the Lord Jesus and thou shalt be saved. So it wouldn't say it's difficult and only a few ever find it if it, was that, if it was hard to get to heaven. Amen? It's hard to live in heaven now. When you, you accept Jesus your Lord and Savior, you can have the promised land in the believer's mind and heart right now and live in peace and joy even though the world's falling apart around you. Because we have to trust what the Word says and not what we see or how we feel. Even Christians, they run by their emotions. 
God says, no, it's not by emotions, it's by fact. I told you that I'm gonna, I'm with you, and I'll bring you through it, and my Holy Spirit will comfort you if you let it. Amen. If you try to do it in the flesh, you will fail. Amen. But if you, if you give up your life for my sake, you will find it. Okay. Now, look at verse 15. The tree and its fruit. Another difficult passage that people take out of context. <clears throat> Beware of false prophets or false teachers who come disguised as harmless sheep but are really vicious wolves. You could identify them by their fruit. That is, by the way they act. Okay? You can pick can you pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? A good tree produces good fruit, and a bad tree produces bad fruit. Verse 18, a good tree can't produce bad fruit. And a bad tree can't produce good fruit. So every tree that does not produce good fruit is chopped down and thrown into the fire. Now look it says in verse 20. Yes, just as you can identify a tree by its fruit, so you can identify people by their actions or by the way they live. That's how you identify people. Not by what they believe, but how they live and what comes out of their mouth or how they live their lifestyle while they're not in church. That's how you know if it's a real believer or not. A real believer will live for God even when they're not in church. Amen? Amen. Okay. True disciples. Look at verse 21. Not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. On judgment day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and performed many miracles in your name. But I will reply, I never knew you. Get away from me, you who break God's laws. Wow. How do you know, how do you know if a believer ever really got to know God? Because a real believer will read the Bible every day, day in and day out, and that's how they get to know God, and that's how they get to know Lord, the Lord by doing His will. And it says, only those who do the will of the Father. So everybody says, yeah, I believe it, but your belief will show up by your lifestyle. That'll show if you really believe it or not. You can actually deceive yourself and say, I believe it, but I really don't. Look at the way I live. Right. I'm really deceiving myself and my brothers and sisters and the Lord. He's going to say, I never knew you. But I go to church and, and, I, and I come to Bible study. Yeah, but I never knew you. You never apply any of it. You get to know him by what? Being with him and applying this to your life. Can I get an amen for that? Amen. These scriptures are not for, just for the Jews. They're for us too. The Bible is written for everybody, from Genesis to Revelations, amen? amen. Keep it out of context. It's meant, the whole Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, is a, progress, a progressive revelation of God's character and His will for our lives, amen? amen? And everything's an example for every believer, so that's why every believer should read the Bible from cover to cover, so they really get to know God's character. If there's a believer that never read the whole Bible, they really don't know God. The only way you get to know God is by reading His Word. Amen? Amen. From Genesis to Revelation. And that's why we do that here, right? Alright, look at verse 24 now. Building on a solid foundation. Anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise. Like a person who builds a house on solid rock. You know, before the house is built, you always see the foundation, right? Our foundation is what? On Christ. The solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand, right? Mm -hmm. Though the rain comes, <coughs> or though the problems come in torrents, and the flood waters rise, and the winds beat against that house, which, we're the house now, we're the temple, right? It won't collapse because it's built on bedrock. When God builds his house in a new believer's heart, he builds them from the ground up, so when all, the, all hell breaks loose, it stands strong. Amen. Because the word of God is what holds them up. Amen? Amen? That's what it's talking about. Now, though the rain comes against the house, it won't collapse because it's built on bedrock. It's solid. On Christ the solid rock I stand. From Genesis to Revelation, every, all of the ground is sinking sand. Amen? Amen? That's what he's saying. 
But anyone who hears my teaching, here's the big one. This is what churches need to preach more and more. Mm -hmm. Listen up. But anyone who listen, hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish. Like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rains and floods, when the problems and trials come, and the winds beat against the house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. What's he saying? When you're not rooted and grounded in God's word, when all the problems in life come, you fall apart. Instead of what? Standing on your solid rock, which is Jesus, which is the Word. Jesus is the rock. is Genesis to Revelation. Can I get an amen for that, please? You have to understand who Jesus is. Jesus is Genesis to Revelation. That's the only way you get to know Him is if you read it yourself. Every believer's duty is to read that Bible daily. Amen? amen. That's the problem in the church today. Nobody reads it. They believe it, but I don't read it. I don't really understand. You know, you really don't know God. You're just knowing God from whatever someone else is telling you about Him. You don't really have a, 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 a relationship with Him yourself. Now look at verse 28. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at His teaching. For He taught with real authority, quite unlike the teachers of religious law, or the fake teachers, amen? He taught with truth, and love Jesus, right? He said, if you follow my ways and obey me, it's like you know, when the winds come and the problems, you won't come and you oh, I'm all frazzled over everything, right? But somebody understands God and his way, say, God, he's going to take me through this, whatever his will be done, amen. 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 And stay stable in the whole situation, not fall apart and get depressed over everything. Oh my God, if we're going to go by our emotions, we're going to be depressed every day what we see going on. Mm -hmm. I'm not getting depressed, I'm getting impressed because every day I wake up is one day closer to heaven. Amen. That's what I'm looking at. Amen? Amen. Amen. And when he comes back, whatever. And the way things are looking, it looks like he's going to come back pretty soon. Because this country doesn't want God anymore. They're making their own rules and creating their own Bible. And it's the devil's Bible. Yep. It's the devil's ways. It's the God of this world they're following. Mm -hmm. Do what you want to do. Anything. You can call yourself whatever you want. <laughs> I know. It's like, really? <clears throat> no, God made what? A man and a woman. Mm -hmm. Amen. Two things. That's what God made. A man and a woman. Right. That's biblical. And that's what I go by. And I don't know about anybody else. Mm -hmm. But if I'm a believer in Jesus Christ, there is no nothing else. <laughs> what? People compromise that. See, what's happening in the churches? They're all accepting this stuff into the church. And saying, oh, you know, are we supposed to love everybody? Yes, we're supposed to love everybody, but there's something that happens. It's called repentance. Mm -hmm. If you really want to live God's way, you have to repent of that. Come and do God's will. Amen? Amen. Repentance is not preached anymore. Mm -hmm. Casual Christianity is coming into play. Where there's no discipline, church discipline, and say, no, you can't live that way here and come here. We don't want sin in our church. Right. So when it comes, we deal with it. We don't just let it slide in, because a little leaven levels the whole lump. Because our flesh loves sin. Mm -hmm. You go to a church that's full of sin, you're going to get a coliseum. Mm -hmm. Coliseum full of people that just live whatever they want and accept God's grace, and I'm going to heaven, and whoop de doo, who cares? No, God saved you for a reason. To build his kingdom down here. Right. And deny yourself for the benefit of others. Right. And the only way that's going to happen is through studying and denying yourself. Amen? Amen. And following Amen. Jesus. Amen. Other than that, we're going to please our flesh all the way to heaven. Right. And grieve the Spirit. Right. And guess what? When you keep pleasing your flesh, you can't hear the Spirit anymore. Mm -hmm. You hear the voice of the devil all the time and just follow him. The voice of God gets rounded up. Believe me, the prophets heard God clearly because they weren't infected with sin. That's why they heard God's voice all the time. When you're infected with sin and living a sinful life, you can't hear God's voice because you're listening to the wrong one. God's voice is through his word. He says, no, don't do it. My spirit is in you to stop you from doing it. Whoever you choose to obey, it says in the Bible, right? Mm -hmm. After we get saved, it's a choice. That was great scripture right there. I could stay on that all night. Mm -hmm. But no, we're not going to. Oh, all right, so we're going to go to the book of John. We're not going to.
We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna go to the book of John, and we're gonna finish um, chapter thirteen. We're gonna go down, and I just wanna expand on a couple of things, and we're gonna move on to fourteen. <coughs> but there's, there's some things in chapter thirteen. I just wanna finish up, and it's gonna be in verse thirty-three of John. Um, we're studying the book of John. Anybody who hasn't, we have all these studies on the website. Each one on the podcast or through the website. Brittany has all the information if you need it, or we have cards with the website on it. Amen? So, because we're already in the middle of this, this book. Okay, verse 33. Jesus telling us, Dear children, I will be with you only a little longer. And as I told the Jewish leaders, you will search for me, but can't come where I am going. So now I am giving you a new commandment. Love each other. Just as I have loved you. You should love each other. Now look what it says in verse 35. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. So how are we going to prove to the world that we're his disciples? By loving one another. The 1 Corinthians 13. Your love for one another. So Simon Peter asked, Lord, where are you going? And Jesus replied, You can't go with me now, but you will follow me later. But why can't I come now, Lord, he asked. I'm ready to die for you. Oh boy. Be careful. Jesus answered, Die for me? I tell you the truth, Peter, before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you'll deny three times that you even know me. So be careful, believers, saying, Oh, I live for Jesus and I live for God every day. Peter walked with Jesus, saw the miracles, everything. He says, I'm willing to die for you. As soon as the trouble came, I don't even know the guy. What? Who's that? Right? As soon as the sword came out. Right? Who's Jesus? How about you? When the sword comes out after you, you're going you're gonna to say, Oh, yeah, I love Jesus. Cut my head off right now. Yeah, right. Don't go judging Peter. Amen? Just imagine the circumstance he was in. Okay, now let me just expand that out a little bit, okay? Before we get going, okay? Peter? Peter understood. And despite his shortcomings, okay, his life ended triumphantly. Because he never let go of his faith in the one who loved him. Okay? It's his faith that saved him. Not his actions, because he failed miserably. Can I get an amen for that? Yeah. It was his faith. To love others was not a new commandment. We can see that in Leviticus 19, verse 18. They was talking about loving one another. But to love others as much as Christ loved others was revolutionary. Now we're to love others based on Jesus' sacrificial love for us. Such love will not only bring unbelievers to Christ, it would also keep believers strong and united in a world hostile to God. What do you see in churches now? Do you see churches loving one another and in agreement with one another? No, they're in all kinds of division because of denominationalism. They're not loving one another. They're not in agreement with the Word of God. They go, oh, this, this, is, this is what this scripture means, and this is what that scripture means. Instead of saying from cover to cover, this is what it says. Right. Amen. Not what it means. This is what it says. Yeah. <clears throat> then we got interpretations of what people think the scriptures say, and then somebody tells someone else that, and then don't even know if it's truth. Yeah. That's just someone's opinion on what it's saying. <laughs> Until you read it yourself and say, no, that's not what it's saying. Because we can take anything out of context to fit into our little program. But when you read it from Genesis to Revelation, there is no compromise. It's the truth all the way through. Amen. And God has revealed to us in a simplistic, realistic way. It's not that hard to understand. Amen. So what do you do? Leave theology out of it. Leave denominationalism out of it, the simple truth of God's word is what makes a believer become like Jesus. Amen. Amen. 
The other ways make them become like Pharisees and hard-hearted and attacking other Christians. Oh, I'm a mature believer. Look at me. I know all this theology. Look how smart I am. But I can't live one iota of it. I'm always tearing people down and complaining my heart away all day long. But I know the scriptures. Well, the devil knows the scriptures too. But they can't apply any of it. And that's what theology does and denominationalism does. It makes you think that you're smart intellectually. Jesus said, no, I don't reveal myself to the intellectual. He says, I reveal myself to the childlike. He says, as a matter of fact, you've got to empty yourself of your intellect and let me be teach you like a child again. And that's how you learn about God. That's what Paul had to do, remember? Paul was smart. He was a theologian. Under Gamil, he was going to become the master Pharisee. You know what he said? That's all garbage compared to knowing Jesus. Amen. But knowing Jesus is knowing his word. Not following some system. Right. And that's what people do. They follow systems of theology. Systems of denomination. And it's all human teaching put in with it. Where God said, I don't want any human wisdom in this. Yes. this the wisdom comes from above. Not from humanism. That's right. Amen. And that's why we teach just the Bible here. And we don't say, oh this is this dispensation. And that was then. No, the Bible is for us all the time. Amen. Amen. It's perpetual. It doesn't change. The word never changes. That's right. Amen. We change. Okay. And we try to fit our little world into this. Mm -hmm. So you see, God said it's okay to do this. This is my little thing. This is what I do to get people into the kingdom. No, your love for one another will show that they belong to. That's what shows them. Not where you go or what you do. It's your love for one another and how you live is what shows people that you belong to Jesus. Amen. Your lifestyle. Praise the Lord, right? We're not going to compromise that here. You're living like the devil. Don't say, oh, Lord, Lord. He's going to say, I never knew you. You live for yourself all the time you were here. Don't tell me that you knew me. You never knew me. But I said, Lord, Lord, all the time. Yeah, even unbelievers use Jesus' name all the time. In vain. And there's believers that use Jesus' name in vain. Because they represent him improperly. Mentioning, oh, I know Jesus, and I know this, and I know that. And then people are watching them and saying, really? What church are you going to? Remind me never to go there. Yeah. And it's a shame. Because you represent him. And the way you think and what you say and what you do and how you live. If you can't say amen, say ouch. Because it doesn't matter. Because God told me to preach the real stuff. Amen. If you like it, you'll accept it. If not, you'll leave. Thank you. The ones who don't want truth, they're going to leave. Because I want to live a lie. I'm saved and I'm going to heaven and I can be miserable and angry and evil and I'm just going to heaven because I got out of hell free because I just believe it. Well, if you believed it, you wouldn't live that way. Hello? Amen. What you live shows what you believe. You, be, you believe. you live, you become what you believe. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. Okay. Okay, let's keep going here. Oh, we got, I love this. All right. Jesus says that our Christ-like love will show what he has disciples, okay? Jesus was a living example of God's love, okay? As we ought to be living example of Jesus' love. Living examples. In verse 35, 34 and 35, Jesus says that our Christ-like love will show that we as disciples. Do people see petty bickering, jealousy, and division in your church? Or do they know you are Jesus' followers by your love for one another? Good question, right? Love is more than simply warm feelings. Okay? It is an attitude that reveals itself in an action. How can we love others as Jesus loves us? By helping when it's not convenient. By giving when it hurts. By devoting energy to others' welfare rather than our own. By absorbing hurts from others without complaining or fighting back. This kind of loving is hard to do. That is why people notice when you do it and know you are empowered by a supernatural source. Mm -hmm. See, they see a different person. How are you handling that without saying something back to them? How are you absorbing it? You see, when a Christian fires back, i got to defend myself. No, Jesus is our attorney, remember? He kept his mouth shut. So any Christian that's knowing God's word and living it will keep their mouth shut when they get persecuted. 
That's how you know that you're growing. You don't have to get your point across. Say, you know what? People are like, what's wrong with this person? He's not saying nothing. Everybody's... Believe me, I got attacked all day long. I put my respirator on so I couldn't say anything. <laughs> hey, the Bible tells you to run from it. It doesn't say to stay in it. Listen, I know how weak I am. I hear it long enough, I'm going to start saying something. I'm human. So what do I do? I run from it. I'll go in the spray booth. I'll go start seeing it. Get away from it. I'm not going to listen to gossip and slander. I'm not going to listen to people degrading other people and talking about other people and complaining about life. No, I have life in me. And I'm going to show people that I'm, I'm alive and I'm grateful I'm alive. Yep. And I'm Amen. grateful I'm working in a hostile environment. Because yep. that shows that I'm his disciple. If I was working in a place that was all hunky-dory and lovely, how can anybody see a difference? So he puts us in a battleground. If any Christian knows that a born-again believer is going to go into a hostile environment, that's why we get prepared for war. It's a war. It's a spiritual warfare. We don't run from it. We embrace it. And look at it as an opportunity to get other believers to Christ. We don't complain about it. What does it, what does, what does a fake believer do? Complain about everything in their life, like God doesn't know what he's doing. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> about everything. But I know the Bible, but you don't know Jesus. Tell me, you can know the Bible without knowing Jesus. Because the only way you're going to know Jesus is to apply his word to your life and obey what it says. Because that's Jesus living through you. Amen? That's a living example of Christ. And that's the truth of God's word, amen? He tells us to die to ourself. That's the problem, right? The crucifixion of the flesh. How do you love somebody that's telling you that they hate you? Jesus was forgiven the ones putting nails in his hands. He says, go and do likewise. Forgive them, they know not what they do. And even if they do forgive them. The Bible has another beautiful description of love. Where is that? Does anybody First know? What is it? First Corinthians 13. First Corinthians 13. <laughs> That's right. Peter probably told Jesus that he was ready to die for him, but Jesus corrected him. He knew Peter would deny him that he knew Jesus that very night to protect himself. In our enthusiasm, it's easy to make promises, but God knows the extent of our commitment. Paul tells us not to think of ourselves more highly than we ought to. Romans 12, verse 3. Instead of bragging, demonstrate your commitment step by step as you grow in your knowledge of God's word and in your faith. Can I get an amen for that? Amen. He says, you're going to get like a kid. <clears throat> Let me teach you all over again. You're going to empty your mind of the world system. And that's the problem. You know what Christians try to do? Mix it. You see, when you try to put theology and intellectualism in with the Bible, you are mixing it. That's the spirit life has nothing to do with theology. The spirit life is actually living a life that Jesus put inside us. Him living his life through you. Amen. That's what it is. Simple as that. Theology takes that away. I'm smart. You know, you think you're really smart. Look in the mirror. Say, well, how smart am I really? Let me look at my life. Look where I am right now. Let's see how smart I really am. <laughs> Without Jesus. Right? And what comes out of my mouth every day? See how smart I really am. And then you say, you know what? I'm going to keep my mouth shut from now on. And let Jesus teach me a new way to think, talk, and act. Yeah. Amen? And that's why we do it here. We cover the cover. Very simple. All right, we're going to move on now to um, chapter 14. Is everybody ready for this? Yeah. All right, let's go to John chapter 14. We get started here tonight. So is everybody with me so far on what we're talking about? Amen. Amen. This is the real deal here. That's right. If you don't want the real deal, go somewhere that's teaching false doctrine. There's plenty of places that do it. The Bible says, if you want to know me, it's from Genesis to Revelation. <laughs> It doesn't tell us to skip. It doesn't tell us to do this and read this and read. That's what people tell you to do. God says, you want to know me? Start in the beginning. 
and you'll and I'll reveal myself to you every time you read me about me. And he does, doesn't he? I don't know how many times I read the Bible, different things jump off the page that I never read before, right? I don't read anything but the Bible. I don't listen to anything but the Word of God. I don't need anything else. Because that's what I feed off of. God. Why would you want to get it from someone else when you can get it right from God Himself? Amen. Everything else is twisted. But you know what Christians are what? Want to get fed. Think about it. Think about somebody that's 40, 50 years old that still wants to get fed instead of feeding themselves. When you're a baby, you need to get fed with a spoon, right? Baby food. But when you grow up, what? You feed yourself. What do you think God does? He waters us. We listen, right? He feeds us. And then he tells us, I want you to feed yourself now. Mm -hmm. Read my word, and I'm going to teach you. Mm. Then we come to church. We go to Bible study. We get the information we need. And then we go read it for ourselves. And then we put it into practice. And voila! Born again! That's all there is to it doesn't require anything else but that. Right. But reading God's Word, joining, the, becoming part of a body of believers that are on the right path, and living what the Scriptures tell you to live the way they tell you to live. Amen. It doesn't take rocket science to figure that out. It's easy to say, I'm going to read this and make sure that's what it really said. So I'm going to go back and say, oh, maybe that really wasn't a sin. So ooh, I can still do that one. <laughs> Because they took it out of, you know, maybe in the Hebrew it didn't mean sin. Or maybe in the Greek it didn't mean that. This is what people do instead of saying, no, it's pretty clear. Sin is sin. From Genesis to Revelation it's revealed through the whole Bible. It doesn't take a rocket science to figure it out. Amen. Sin never changed. People do the same thing day in and day out. They're jealous, full of envy, wickedness, fear, doubt, and selfishness. Can I get an amen for that? Amen. And that's get that blocks us from having a relationship with God. Doing things our way instead of His. All right, let's go to verse um, 1 of chapter 14. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Now, the way the world is going right now troubles a lot of people's hearts. You want to know what's going on. But it says, don't let your hearts be troubled. What's going to stop us from our hearts being in trouble? Trust in God. Right? And trust in me. What does that mean? That means trust in what the words are telling us. If you're not in the word, you don't know what it's telling you. Trust in God and also trust in me. There is more than enough room in my father's home. Or there are many rooms in my father's house. If, there were not, if this were not so, I would have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you. Or if this was not so, I would have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you. Some manuscripts read, if this were not so, I would have told you. I'm going to prepare a place for you. Where everything, when everything is ready, I will come and get you. Mm. Do you see that? Now listen. Jesus said, when everything is ready, I will come and get you. He's coming to get us. Amen. Thank you. Right now, the sooner the better. <laughs> Any mature believer knows that. Well, and when Jesus comes back, it's a victory. And if we pass on, it's a victory too. Amen. Because then we're going to be with him. Amen. It's not a death is a deserted life for a believer. Amen. If you really understand what it says, but we're human, and you know we want. I want to live so I can bring more people into the kingdom. Remember Amen. Hezekiah? God says, "Get your affairs ready. You're going to die." Hezekiah says, "No, Lord. I served you faithfully for all these years, and I want to continue to do it." He said, because you said that, I'm going to extend your life 15 years. Mm -hmm. And Hezekiah lived 15 years. And there was another king that just depended on the doctors instead of Jesus. And what happened to him? Does anybody know? He died. I can't remember the king's name. It's in the Bible. I'll look it up. It's in the Bible. I forgot what his name is. But I know Hezekiah, he had some kind of a growth arm. He said, you're not going to recover from this. And even after he did recover from it, he still made a mess and God still honored him. He still lived the 15 years. But his heart was right. He wanted to serve the Lord, so he extended his life. I don't know about you, but I already made a choice. My choice is to serve God. Amen. I don't get paid for this. <laughs> My rewards are in heaven. Money down here means nothing to me. Nothing. I got to go to work to get money to pay for bills. But that doesn't, that's not what my life is devoted to, money. 
Money is the root of all evil. It takes us away from God. <clears throat> Can I get an amen for that? <clears throat> all right, now look what it says. When everyone is, everything is ready, I will come, verse 3, and get you, so that you will always be with me where I am. And you know the way to where I am going. No, we don't know, Lord. See, Thomas said, we have no idea where you're going. So how can we know the way? See, Jesus, see, they didn't understand that he had to die. They thought the king was just going to appear and live forever. They didn't understand the scriptures. I love that. Know the way. Jesus told him, I am, again, the way, the truth, and the life. So Jesus, Jesus himself is the way, he's the truth, and he is the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. If you had really known me, you would know who my Father is. See, they didn't really know him. See it? Even though they were walking with him, they really didn't know him. See it? If you had really known me, you would know who my father is. Okay? From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said. Look what he said right after this. Look, he said, look what Philip said. Philip said, Lord, show us the father and we will be satisfied. Jesus just said, and from now on, you do know him and have seen him. And Philip just asked him, show us the father. Jesus has told him you've seen him. Yeah. This is how you stop in this human. Think about it. <clears throat> Jesus just got done talking to us. Right? That's just what this example is. <laughs> and we still doubt. Mm -hmm. Show us. Show me proof. He wasn't even he didn't even get the sentence out. He's asking him already to show us the father. Yeah, right. now, now let's think about this. These people are walking with Jesus. Yeah. We, we, we think that we're all high and mighty. Thinking, oh yeah, I love Jesus. And we, we never walked with him. In the flesh. And they still questioned him. So that's why it's easy to stay like a child. And teachable. Saying, you know what? I ain't all that in a ball of wax. I got my doubts. And be real with God. And with others. How many can honestly say they don't have any doubts? about what they're following sometimes. <laughs> You'd be lying. Because you're not, because you know what it is? We have an expectancy from it. You see, we do the things, we read the Bible, we come up, and we expect something to come from it. And God says, no, you do it because it's the right thing to do, not to get anything from it. You're, you're already saved. That's, the, that's all you need. Mm -hmm. Everything you have is already done. But we expect what? Peace and joy, you know. Yeah, you can have peace and joy if you live the way he tells you to live. Right. Amen. There's something that you have to do. And then when it doesn't happen, we get discouraged and downcast. And I do all this work for the Lord, and why is all hell breaking? Because you're living in the devil's world. You just answer the question, why is it happening to me? Because you're trying to do the thing, the right thing in the world going wrong, and you're gonna and everybody's gonna attack you for it. Because it shines light. When you're living in the dark, nobody bothers you. But when you shine light on the dark, even the Christians, oh, living right is legalism. Right. Yeah. Living right is legalism. No, living right is not legalism. Legalism is saying i got to wear a suit wherever I go, and I can't go here, and I can't go there. Living the way God wants you to live is not legalism. That is the whole reason why we got saved. Amen. But Christians that want to live their own way are saying, that's legalism, living right. Who are you telling me how to live? I'm not telling you how to live. God is. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> and it's revealed to His Word. Yeah. He says, don't do that. Don't go here. Don't go there. Don't associate with people like that. Yeah. Because bad company corrupts good character. So what do you do? You don't go there. Thank you, Jesus. I'm so glad he changed my whole thinking. He tells me no. It means no. No explanation. God doesn't have to explain himself to me. He says, no, that's sin. Don't do it. But why? Well, read the Old Testament and you'll see what happens when you do do it. Because the Old Testament gives us the examples of what sin does to someone. 
Can I get an amen for that? So don't think it won't happen to you, because that hasn't changed. The human heart hasn't changed one iota. It went from chariots to Cadillacs, that's all. <laughs> We're still jealous and envious and hateful and commit murder in our hearts and have all kinds of bitterness, just like they did in unbelief. Okay, let's keep going. Jesus replied, look at verse 9. Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and yet you still don't know who I am? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. So why are you asking me to show him to you? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I speak are not my own. But my Father who lives in me does his work through me. What's the principle? He saves us. Jesus lives his life through us. And the words that come out of our mouth are God's words, not ours. That's the principle. What do you think he's saying? Look what he says. He lives in me and does his work through me. As a believer, God does his work through who? The believer. We're the examples of what Christ would be like down here. The problem is nobody wants to do that. I just want to live my way. No, we live God's way because we're living examples to bring others into the kingdom. Okay. Now look what it says. Just believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe because of the work you have seen me do. They've seen Jesus do all kinds of things. Raise the dead, heal the blind, the lepers. He was doing all kinds of things. And look what he did in your life. Amen. Think of all the things he did for you. And then we still doubt him. Am I really following the right thing? Remember John the Baptist? He introduced the Messiah. He ended in prison. He said, is he really the one or should we go look for someone else? How did I end up in jail? Get it? Because he expected something from what he was doing. Right. Same thing with a believer now. We expect something from him. I want to get blessed. Ooh, I'm going to go to church, I'm going to read my Bible, and I'm going to pray, and I'm going to get blessed. And then guess what? Nothing gets answered, all hell breaks loose, and you lose your faith. Because you did it for the wrong reason. Amen. You did it because you wanted something. Yes. Not because he did something for you. Right. See the difference? Right. And how many people come to church when they want something, or when there's pain, and then after it's gone, they're off again. Right? They don't understand the principle. There's going to be pain through all our lives. Just to represent Him. Suffer. It's an honor and a privilege to suffer for my namesake. What do you mean suffer? By denying yourself when you want to do something. And He says no when you go do something for Him. That's suffering for a believer. Because we want something. Instead of doing it, we say no to it and our flesh crawls. And we come over here, all right, I'll do it. Because <laughs> it interferes with what I'm doing. See, when God calls a believer to do something that interferes with their time, that's how you know the real believer. When they'll say, No, it's God's time. God's calling me to do something. I'm doing it. Amen. That's how you know if you're hearing His voice. Because let me tell you something God will call you at the most inconvenient time <laughs> yeah. to see where you are with Him. Yeah. Then if you say, Oh, I'm tired. Oh, I can't right now. Or I'm busy. Jesus says, that's okay. I'll just get someone else. Yes. And you miss out on the opportunity to grow. Mm -hmm. Does he hate you for it? No, he loves you. But you had the problem to begin with. You satisfying yourself is the whole problem why we need to get a Savior. Yeah. He's trying to say, if you stop doing that and serve me, you'll have life now. Mm -hmm. yeah. He says, but that's going to be painful it's going to be crucifixion when you want to do something that I want you, instead of doing it, I want you to do this for me, on your, instead of this. And I was just talking to my wife. She said, oh, maybe we need to go on vacation. Well, how are we going to go on vacation? We've got to serve the Lord. That's right. The heck with vacation. My vacation's in heaven. Amen. That's just my flesh wanting to get away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what it is. No, God says, no, you do what I told you to do. Don't you worry. I'll bless you when the time comes. When I think fit, if I see fit, and if not, so what? You're already blessed because I even considered you worthy to even serve me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. I said, thank you, Jesus. I'm even worth, not even worthy to serve you. After all the sins and things I've done in my life, you still want to use me. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And you look the same way yourself and say, wow, why would he want me? Because he knows you can do it. He knows you can do it if you want to. But it's still a choice. He gave Samson all the power he needed as a Nazarite to conquer the Philistines. His flesh got in the way of it. And he couldn't do it. But God gave him all the power he needed. He gives us all the power we need it too, but our flesh gets in the way of that too. Mm -hmm. It's the same principle. What did he do? What were the two things that killed Samson? Wine and women. Wine and women. <laughs> and what's the thing that kills believers now? Wine and women. Wine and women. <laughs> the biggest sins in the church now. I can drink. I just don't know how much with the fences. It's like, okay, how about if you don't do it at all? Why are you going to drink when I'm the one who's going to fill you? Right, my spirit is what fills you, not, not the spirits and the alcohol. Amen. Wine and spirits. It doesn't say wine and Jesus. Amen. It says wine and spirits. And what spirits come out after you drink wine? Not God's. Amen. Any believer will tell you that. You go gratify your flesh and you compromise Amen. and you do nasty things. Yep. And then you wish you couldn't do it because it makes you compromise your morals. Yes. Right. So don't tell me it's from God. That's why he says don't get drunk with wine because it will ruin your life. Yeah. Instead be filled with the Spirit. What's the Spirit? The Word of God. This is all, this is all the drinking I need right here. Drinking from the water of life. Amen. Amen. That's right. Not the wine bottle. When you're drinking out of the bottle, that means this ain't enough for you. Right. And don't lie to yourself saying, oh, I can do both. Right. Alcohol is not a sin. No, it's not. But why are you drinking it? Amen. Are you drinking it because it tastes good? Oh, I don't have a taste of anything. It tastes like gasoline to me. No. A nice cold glass of lemonade tastes good. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I drink because it tastes good. Really? Grape juice tastes way better than white and bitter and sour. It's like, what the heck is that? Amen. You guzzle the guzzle that down in the summertime, you're going to end up on the ground. Yeah. Yeah. And a red nose. Uh -huh. You can tell people who drink wine, their noses turn yes. red. Burgundy. Yes. I don't drink, I don't touch a drop. They look like Rudolph. Yes. Amen, that's the truth. Oh yeah, you can tell a wine off from far away. Yes. It just oozes out of their pores. Yes. You, know you know what they'll tell you? Christians, Jesus drank wine. That's what they'll say. Mm -hmm. Jesus never sinned. You can't tell me every time you drink, you never go over. Because you don't know if you're over or not till you do. Uh -huh. yeah, right. I'm drinking because I'm stressed. Oh, Jesus is the cure for stress. Amen. Not that. I'm drinking because it goes good with my food. So does water. <laughs> justification. But I'm a Christian and I'm going to heaven. So don't let him tell me what to say. No, God tells you how to live. And he told and he told Samson not to drink a drop so he can do his will. That and women was what took him out of his will. Yeah. And that's what will take you out of his will. Every time. Yeah. Yeah. Every time. Every time. Does God forgive me? Yes. But I can do it because I'm saved and I'm going to heaven. I've been taught wrong all my life. I've been taught by my God's grace I can do whatever I want. No, God's grace is so you don't have to do it. Yeah, amen. So, hello, read the Bible. Scripture's out of context again, right? People will leave. That's why the place ain't full. Mm -hmm. Oh, God's grace, God's grace, God's grace. That's just the milk. Mm -hmm. God's grace is the milk. It's only a small part of this. Yeah. Small part of it. Yeah. All right, we're going to have to stop here. We're already out of time. Oh, oh, Thank you, John. Thank you. But you know what? No, look, wait. Let's go to verse 12. All right. I can't, I can't stop at this. This is important. Right here. Let's finish at this one. I tell you the truth. Anyone who believes in me, listen to this power, will do the same works I have done and even greater works because I'm going to be with the Father. You can ask for anything in my name and I will do it. When he says you can ask for anything in my name, 
and I will do what he's saying, anything in my will. Right. That's what he's saying. Uh -huh. So that the Son can bring glory to the Father. Yes, ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. Amen. 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 All right, just one more. If you love me, here it is. How many of us would say we love God, right? Yeah. It says, if you do, obey me. Yeah. yeah. If you love me, obey. Obey what? My commandments. Now, what's God's commandments? Love one another. Love God and love yourself. The golden rule. Do unto others you rather do unto you. That's the commandments. All fulfilled. <coughs> Why? Love doesn't do any harm to anybody. That's right. Love fulfills the law. Mm -hmm. Everybody thinks, oh, I don't, I'm lawless. I don't have to do the law. No. Love fulfills the law. Right. Yes. It's not like he took He says, my commandments will never go away. My love is what fulfills the commandments. Oh, I don't have to do the commandments. No, you have to love someone. And what's loving someone? Obeying all the commandments. It's the same thing. Oh, my goodness. God's love, 1 Corinthians 13. All right, thank you for me to share that. We'll, we'll continue um, in verse 16 when we get back together again. Brittany's going to come up and sing, and we're going to close. Amen? Amen.